Welcome back, folks, to a meandering session. We're here at the Mere Mortals and Meandering's a chance for us to have deep conversations, but definitely with a lighthearted touch. And today you got Juan on this side. Karen here on this side. <coughs> ho, ho, um, ho, ho, ho. Exactly. For, again, once again. Got in some Mercury in the spirit. background. We're yeah. Here. Perhaps if you're listening they won't quite tunely, it. uh, uh, unless it echoes back or something like that. Nah, so they won't. Um, yeah, meanderings again, just a chance for us to chat about random topics, things that are on our mind. Um, mine mainly has been the reality of data or the the truth of, in data. I, I do like to uh, look at the truth very much in the face, and I have been in this journey of getting closer and closer to to the truth. Um, <laughs> one thing that has <clears throat> helped me in, in seeing this has been the new watch actually the, the new Apple watch so previously I tracked my sleep not oh I'd say religiously like you know for many years I've been tracking it and you know I had my stats and it's it's only going to be as good as the input of the data that I was getting in so you know for a very Are long you time or a ring or no I was using the Garmin like so it was a Garmin Instinct that I used previously and now I'm using the Apple watch now again they're going to have some fluctuations in, in percentages wise of how they track sleep so that's fine but to give you an idea, I think the average, the three month running average with my sleep tracking with the previous watch uh, and, and the sensors, it was something along the lines of 8.2 hours of, of total sleep. Uh, deep sleep was something amongst like 0.7 or 0.8 hours, so like 40 something minutes. And REM sleep was a bit higher, like um, I'd say like 150 minutes somewhere on a, maybe a little bit less, two, no, it was like 2.1 hours, so something like that. And I, that's all, all the data I knew. Now, perhaps I have been sleeping worse lately, or perhaps now having this particular watch, it's tracking things in a slightly different way. So, not... What if the watch is making you sleep worse? Mm, I didn't think about that. <laughs> uh, that's a good point. Although, there has been a benefit to it that... It's like I electromagnetic didn't... Sin- signals yeah, entering yeah, your brain. Making me, you're making like me, <laughs> making sh- me sleep you. worse. Yeah. The, the, the watch, which I haven't noticed this before, or had this before, where it'll... It wakes you up with the watch, not with an alarm, and it's like a very gentle sort of vibration slash ring. I have found that to be a really gentle way of waking up, as opposed to the the drilling of a of an alarm. Yeah. Now, normally, I'm I'm waking up before an alarm, anyways, but it, it's been nice with that particular um, feature. However, uh, I have looked back at my last week, and I've I've had this now for a little bit over a week, but the last week of of sleeping has been. Uh, Compared to you know my three months previous, I'm like, oh, okay, this is this is dreadful. So I think in six hours and twenty two minutes is like the average over the whole week. That's that's been the average. And there's been some days of, of four hours and then some getting up to seven hours. But I even looking at my deep sleep and my REM sleep, I'm like, wow, these are really shitty numbers. And I go, mm. I wonder if this is more closer to the truth. If the Garmin was previously doing it. I'll I'll tend to think that this is probably a little bit closer to the reality as opposed to the Garmin, given that it's for all intents and purposes got a little bit more quality to it more more details but it made me think okay now i know that i'm i'm sleeping worse perhaps now there has been reasons this whole week for for sleeping worse. it's just been christmas parties after christmas parties after event after doing things all sort of stuff so i'm like, okay uh maybe it's just a, a week a week that that has been that generally bad sleeping so maybe maybe it'll improve um but you know, does it help you? Does it help you to know that sort of information better or worse? Let's say if you had, um, say you're with your metronome, whether you're, you're doing your handstands, mm-hmm. you know, what if you found out that, you know, a new watch or some other app is like, oh, it's actually been off by, by point, like by 10%. Like one, one beat. Yeah, one like one beat or something like that. It's actually slower. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you think that that would, that would help in any way? Because for me, I go, okay, I'm seeing this data. It's, you know, a difference maybe of 10, 20% of what I was seeing before. It's it's guiding me to say, okay, maybe, you know, has it been this week? Has it been that my sleep hasn't been that great anyway, so I need to take some steps? For me, I go, okay, that's useful. Like, useful in the sense that I'm happy that I'm, I'm seeing more of the truth. I'll be able to shift from that rather than, you know, if I'm telling people, oh, I'm still getting like, you know, seven and a half hours sleep even though I wake up at four in the morning and then the reality is like, actually, no, you're not. It's like, uh, okay, all right, maybe I'm not. Mm. Um, is it at all useful to... To have that for you? Uh, I think in in this case and what most people would say, do you know the difference between accuracy and precision? Yes. Yep. So for those who don't, you'll see it on your screen now, mm-hmm. but it's basically like imagine a bullseye, something that's very accurate will be uh, darts kind of hitting around it, mm-hmm. around the center, but not actually hitting the center. Uh, but if you take the sum of them, you know, it's bang on in the middle, mm-hmm. something that's very precise, they'll all be centered around one spot, but it might be like slightly located off to the side. Mm-hmm. In this case, I think it's actually better that your whatever your thing is is precise. Mm. So, 
uh, a friend of mine, Quark, he owns a body scan for one of the Good Life gyms. Mm -hmm. And he was having some problems with like the electrical input because it's like super, it's a body scanner, mm -hmm. you know, sends electrical thing through your body, measures how fast it is and then gets, you know, your body mass, how much of yours, your mass, your body mass is muscle, fat, mm -hmm. organ, I don't know, other, yeah. other shit. And he was having problems with that because there was something wrong with his gym. Maybe like the power supply was varying a little bit or something. Okay. And whilst the machine was still precise, it was not accurate, he thought. He, he would get gotcha. different results from his when he was doing it at home versus at the gym. Mm. But they would still say centered around the same point. Mm. But it was just like, you know. He was now saying he maybe had 14% instead of 10%, something like that. Yeah. In this case, I, I, I think it wouldn't matter if your mm. old watch was shit and mm. it was continually giving you inaccurate stuff as long as it was just precise. So you nah, could see... Nah, I disagree, man. I disagree with sleep because, so again, so for me, there would there is like a, a threshold in my mind that I would want it to be at. Mm -hmm. So accuracy is important in that sense so, like say again here it could say precisely that i'm sleeping four hours every day that's not helpful yeah but you're actually sleeping eight hours yeah let's say exactly so it could be like it, it could be With precisely it. saying four hours all the time yeah. and that's fantastic however that's not like the accuracy of knowing that you're reaching a certain threshold is needed so it's very important there i guess well, i guess from how you're saying it though it uh, wouldn't be such such an importance for you i guess in your well metronome use. I, I think no no so you know if i was missing out I was actually doing 58 seconds when mm. I thought I was doing 60. As long as it's been throughout my whole history yeah, of, of that's training, fine. That, yeah. that's fine. All right, so the question then for you would be the the new watch. Let's mm. say it's it's giving you one day it says you're, you're doing six hours of sleep, mm. but you actually slept six and a half. The next day it's uh, you know eight hours, but you actually slept um, eight and a half hours. Mm. And, and, you know, it's, it's kind of like continually getting it wrong, but it's overall it is accurate would you prefer that oh, versus gotcha. as in like <clears throat> it's saying you get, as, as an average is actually quite accurate yeah and instead of it continually saying on the dot every dot your sleep is uh you know half an hour less than what you actually got but it continually shows that same proportion and proportions of of your others yeah which I mean, of those I, I would think, you prefer yeah, i would prefer if it was accurate over the long term okay so even if it was giving dodgy stuff <laughs> even if it was like you know if it said I slept four hours today, eight hours tomorrow, four hours the next day, <clears throat> but it wasn't actually that; it was something yeah. else. But in the end, over three months, because for me, I do more tracking over the three months. If it's accurate over those three months, I'd be like, okay, that's fine. Okay. That's, that's kind of cool. I'm not, I'm not, you know, for me at least, from my sleeping patterns, I don't immediately look at it and go, ah, oh, damn, I've only gone two minutes of REM sleep, fifteen minutes of deep sleep, this much sleep. I don't make dramatic changes to my day based on that. I'll make some changes, obviously. Like, you know, you go have a big night out, folks, or something like that. You might the next day be like, okay, I'm going to take it a little bit easy. I'm not going to exert myself as much. You don't have to look at the numbers to do that. So I'm not particularly looking in the numbers for that purpose. But I do want it to be accurate over a period of time because when I look at it more from a three-month schedule, I can go, okay, you know, through life, either changes, either because I'm, I'm not looking at things month by month, really, and if over three months, you know, those those three sort of sections, I go, oh, okay, my sleep's actually getting like much worse on on, on average. Okay, there's something I probably need to, to look at that. But I'm, I'm not going to be immediately changing things on a day-to-day -day basis. So again, my example of this week, it's saying that I've, I've only slept like six hours and 22 minutes on average. I'm not immediately making like, oh, dramatic changes. I've got to start training at night time. I've got to, you know, go take two grams of magnesium, something like that. I don't know. I might start doing some subtle things but i just know oh, okay i've just been messing around i've got other things going on i probably have just slept less if i saw that over an extended period of time i'd go okay then we have a problem mm. then I, I need to be using something else yeah see i think the, the same thing i, I would almost mm. say the same thing i don't measure my, my sleep but mm. if i did i'd i get the feeling i'd prefer the precise one even if it was mm. continually a little bit down or a little bit more than what i actually did in reality yeah and I would say the same thing over the long run. I would still be able to look at it and I wouldn't bother on a day-to-day -day mm. sort of thing. But over the long run, I would see, okay, I was continually getting, let's just say, 7.5 hours. And mm. then, you know, these last three months, it's dipped down, a uh, like continual dip down to kind of six and a half. Mm. I, would, I would still then go, well, you know, it doesn't really 
bother me if I was actually getting seven and three quarters and now mm-hmm. it's six and three quarters and it was off by that you know mm-hmm. continually off by that proportion and i'd still be able to make adjustments on that so i guess we mm-hmm. all win in the end doesn't <laughs> unless it's imprecise and inaccurate in yeah, which yeah, case. yeah if it's, impre- <laughs> I mean, if it's both, then you, you stuffed it up but I, I've, i'll still hold that i would want it to be accurate on the long term like i, I would go accuracy over precision on, on some of these things same thing with say if you're trying to lose weight and you're like talking about calorie tracking you don't want it to be precise in telling you it's always 200 calories uh or let's say a thousand calories over but it's really precise Mm. you'll get to you know a few months and be like oh shit i'm actually way over eating for my threshold and for my base metabolic rate damn i've actually put on weight i was trying to lose weight so yeah that's probably a place you want it to be accurate doesn't necessarily have to be precise i suppose it matters more when you're switching devices as well because then you can use old old data data to like leverage the new data once again i think it would probably be preferable you have a precise device moving to a precise device that wouldn't matter that much mm. accurate to accurate wouldn't that matter that much but if you went from something that was accurate to something yeah precise, the other way then, yeah then would, yeah or, or vice versa that would, that's um, where you'd have a bit of a problem yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. so yeah so we, we, i've seen i've seen that um come into effect so uh the other thing i was going to talk about was so today i did my my first crossfit competition mm-hmm. is the first one i guess so theoretically i mean theoretically no, i did the crossfit well open before. yeah but kind of a competition yeah yeah okay it's like an online competition it's second um so that was one this was like the first in person against other people around again it's, it's quite a bit of a fun thing but one of the things i found out was okay one just after not doing crossfit basically for a little while just shows me how the the different modalities uh that are needed there it's just again so much different to just your, your usual training at the gym or your usual running swimming longer endurance sort of thing it's just a whole complete different different beast and for me I, I normally struggle or suck if i take just even a couple of days off you know some people like to peak when they're training and will take like a day or two off and will be perfect for the for the workout or for the particular like lift for me i'm like it's almost better if i just continue training and don't don't stop until like the particular thing that i'm doing that's probably better for me um but in this time around you know i hadn't done this type of training for a long time and maybe paired up with the fact that sleep has been a little bit shoddy and i just went wow okay this it, it reminisced to me the of the first time i went to crossfit and i was like so got just got smoked just got smoked to the point that even in both workouts i did today i just had to not finish i, I had to like basically be like just stop and be like okay you two because it was a group of three you guys have to like finish the workout now one of them is just <clears throat> my mobility and movement I, I can't even do that particular movement so I, I tried it was like 50 what, reps what of uh, dumbbell hang clean and for me there's that particular movement I don't know I just always go on my like toes when I go to the bottom and I was doing like three reps and it was just the super inefficient movement that I just couldn't even like lift it properly and they were just like cranking it out so I was like cool you guys go for your life just smash it out um, but uh, a, it also I mean in a nice way I kind of went you know what I'm never destined to be fantastically good at this particular thing and that's okay I was like you know what again there's another realization of like ah oh, it's fun to do this for the sheer journey of making it fun not for hey i'm doing this because i want to achieve an ultimate outcome of being the top in australia or the top of whatever it's just for like form purpose mental health purpose physical fitness all that sort of stuff um my thought that came out as i was driving here i was like if you let's say two months time three months time you're still hammering at the ha- handstands one-handed handstands and whatever um and either by way of uh, a physical issue let's just say that for whatever reason your elbow or your shoulder it, it just can't just can't hold any anymore for what you really were planning on being like the next step ahead or you know there's, there's improvement in the existing people who are doing handstands or the movement or the up and coming or anything like that where it's just evident to you hey um i'm not going to get any better than i'm, I'm not right now that's it it's evident there's as good as it's going to get it's not going to go any further um do you think your mentality with say hand sense will be like uh cool i'm, I'm happy with that because it's just purely now for the fact that i just really enjoy doing handstands and i'll have my my little like one percenters basically per year uh but i'll never become you know well known or known about it or anything uh or would that disappoint you in any way uh oh, it's it's a it's a mix so i was actually chatting with something like this with mm. brendan yesterday if I break my wrist and it was just irreparable, mm. let's let's just say even then I would I would still be like I'll come back from this. Mm. Uh, 
I've got another wrist. Mm-hmm. So let's just say both my wrists got cut off, I was, and I was I was handless. Mm-hmm. Then well, no, no, no. I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying. <laughs> I'm not saying that you have the inability to do it. I'm saying like, yeah. no, no. You can still continue doing handstands, but it is just self-evident you will never be better than the top people who are actually doing it in, in I, handstands. I mean, that's already evident. There's, you know, I'm, yep. I'm never getting to the Cirque du Soleil level. That mm-hmm. you needed to have begun not at 25 like I did, but mm-hmm. at five. Yep. <laughs> so, so those people, yeah, they're. they're I'll, I, I just. I won't be able to. That's yeah. that's that's a reality. Just like it's the reality that my dad is never going to be, you know, beat Roger Federer. It's mm. just it, it's that sort of level of okay, they're yeah. that far ahead. Um, but no, I, I don't think that uh, dampens my spirit in any mm. way. Um, yeah, I, I don't care about being the best. I care. Uh, I'd like to be one of the best. I think mm. that'd be cool. But you know, what is one of the best? Is that top one yeah, yeah, percent? Is that top ten percent? You know, but I think would you be dissuaded in the fact that say for you if take whatever example here whether it's seconds in a handstand hold it's you know doing a one-handed handstand it's the amount of planches you do um straddles you're doing or something like that when they actually plateau and plateau to the point that like that's it that's that's the limit it's being reached now you from here on out and there's going to come a point for everyone about this it's going to go backwards backwards Mm. will stay you like you'll have to just be struggling to stay the same will at that point you think find some frustration or find some like awesome cool i'll now just enjoy the journey of just doing this yeah, i think i'll move on um, mm. I, you know i i would say i peaked at soccer probably around 19 mm. if i had to guess i, th- I think I, I stopped playing when i was 20 after yep. a, a pretty bad year of just just being a kind of shit team had mm. some injury like rolled my ankle twice that year yep and i i played again when i was 25 for a year or maybe 24 and it just it, it hurt like that that season just hurt there's continual mm. injuries there's continual like little yeah. niggling things yep i would never be fully fit coming into a game mm. because i'd have twinched my groin or it'd be my hamstring or you know an yeah. ankle or something like that uh I, uh and i used to put a lot of my self-worth into like i'm current the soccer player yeah that was yeah, my yeah. thing yep uh the identity was was soccer player. It was a it was a fair chunk of it. Yeah, I'd say like eighty percent, ninety percent, something like that. Uh, I don't remember consciously moving on, but mm. yeah, sure enough, I moved on, went, started doing gym. And so you so you think that there will come a time for you with hand sense that you'll go? It's hard for me to move. Uh, obviously, on. like uh, yeah. Well, there's there's, there's, there's the, the thing. There's it depends the thing. It's, when it's, it comes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess I I ask this question because I don't see it as an obvious thing, but maybe it is for folks out there. Because for me. There is, I, I cannot envision a day that I don't want to continue doing gym. Like that, that will never, I, I can't even like fathom that happening. Now I might, again, we've talked about a lot of, you know, with, with me running and not enjoying it and then doing it for a little bit, pausing again. But with gym, you just see some unfathomable me that I wouldn't continue to do it no matter what, no matter that, you know, I'm injured, no matter that, you know, all of a sudden I don't have legs. Uh, I would still just continue going, even if it's regression, if it's regression from, my current standpoint and every time i'm going it's just worse and worse and worse uh not because of you know overtraining or something else crazy it's just purely because that's just life that's just you're getting worse as time goes on like i can see myself trying out different modalities longer running triathlon more swimming but never would i go away from doing some sort of gym movement and, and i've started to see that even now with say with bench press i, I feel like i got to a point where you know a couple of weeks ago me and more lights i twinge my chest and if you might have listened to that um and even today like it's it it has healed i'd say 80 percent of the way but i can feel it where it used to be i would guess my like 70 percent of my one rep max i can still feel it like really quite tight like if i go heavier it's like i feel like i'm gonna injure it again and i go oh, okay uh it, um, is that, this mean i'm that's it like i'm gonna go, go heavy, heavy ever again on, on a bench press um and i think the answer is probably like yeah, maybe the altercation I might do so if I'm really training correctly for it I'm preparing everything around that am I going to be annoyed that I can't do it anymore you know maybe for a little bit but I went ah it's kind of fine and my last couple of weeks of training with chess has been again it's changed to a more of a bodybuilding routine so it's been high volume different movements and it's been totally fine totally fine in the sense that like I'm okay with not ever getting back to what I was and it even regressing continuously literally to the day I can't do it that that's fine with me so i think when when people say oh oh it's obvious i'll move on i i think for me it's not obvious that i'd ever 
move on from that. Although there's definitely other things that for sure I would move on from. Uh, I mean, you just listed a bunch of stuff that isn't gym. Running, cycling, swimming. <laughs> That's not gym no, in no, my so, mind. No, so I guess... If so, you meant physical exercise, no, 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 then no, no, I understand no. so, so that. Specifically, so specifically, I'm saying like, I, would, I will run and I will swim. I will never not do gym. Yeah. Like what? there will never be a time when I don't do gym. I, I guess what I'm saying for you, do you think that there will never be a time that you don't do handstands? Uh, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, like, so I, like for you, I, there's I did like soccer. I'd, um, well, and, 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 that's what, and that's what I'm saying. It's like I guess you can you can imagine that, and maybe maybe this is the the default thinking across the broader population. Maybe I don't have it, but for me, I'm like I cannot. What do you mean by gym? Do you mean you would never uh, have a home gym, and as in it's the atmosphere in the gym and the lifting uh... of weights? Do you mean you know you'd never yeah um, i'm I, was, I suppose i'm struggling with like the specificity of yeah, what, so specificity gym, what for you me mean would by be gym not calisthenics and so not just body weight movement it's it's movements with machines or barbells with weight mm-hmm. that that would probably be be my thing so it's not specifically like but a not different in mode. a gymnasium could be, could be in a gym could be in like a home gym or whatever it may like be an outdoor workout with weights yeah i do work out with weights um but here i'm saying specifically some form of where i've got i'll be specific you know training with barbells dumbbells and machines i couldn't see a day in the future that i don't want to continue to do that um but maybe 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 there's there's a maybe i'm saying that without without the expectation maybe in 30 years i might completely change but at this moment i'm like that doesn't seem obvious to me yeah where, where i think maybe what you're saying is you could conceive a day that you don't do handstands anymore. Yeah, well, for me, it'd be movement. I'd, I'd, I'd always want to do something with my body, but I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not tied to tied to the handstand specifically. Okay. Yeah, although I really do enjoy them, mm-hmm. and I've seen plenty of people who can do them up until their, you know, 80s sort of thing like yeah. that. So I think mine has gone definitely beyond the scope when it comes to gym training. Of it's no longer it's no longer for the purpose of just physical fitness and that aspect of it probably has moved much like it as time goes on it goes like lower and lower in the percentage field it's much more now of routine the discipline mental health just the time to be able to be you know in a different sort of space that's starting to be like oh that's even more of a priority so you know again six years ago i will have been annoyed like you know you you sort of uh, rank your your workouts i guess um I would have done a sort of a similar thing many years ago to go, oh, well, that one was a really great workout. No down, it was an awesome workout. Um, and this is the reasons why. And, you know, for a big part, it's because you're working towards a particular progress and goal that you're aspiring to. Whereas now it's like, oh, it's the fact of just going to a gym and doing the movement and, and mm-hmm. sweating and, and moving around. That's enough for me. But specifically, it's like, it's not enough for running, for swimming, for all, for a lot of modalities I've tried in my life, even like sports. It's very specific to like, yep, for me, gym is that place for it all. So, yep. so I, yeah, I, don't know, I don't know what combinations it is, but that's just what it's become. Cool. So I'd be cool. keen to hear me more lights out there. Send me a boost grammar or a comment. If, uh, which way do you, do you sit on? Do you sit on uh, my mentality where it's uh, obvious that you'll always keep doing it or is it obvious that you won't uh, for maybe perhaps a physical fitness thing that you do or something else that you do in life as well? So Yeah, nice, nice. Let me know. Nice. Let me know. Cool. Uh, what have you got? Oh, man, there's, there's like five different things that I could have jumped in and diverted yep. away at any point then. So I'll just try and rattle them off, yeah, I yeah. suppose. So um, with related to sleep, uh, I have been implementing my, my kind of like habits. Uh, so uh, mm. if you check the monthly goals, I was, I was having like a bit of a last kind of shitty last couple of months yep, yep. Wouldn't, wouldn't say i was depressed but i was definitely getting into a, a bad mood mm-hmm. and yeah uh, i i think the fixing of the sleep of getting something done in the morning something kind of useful practical yeah. right just being able to tick something off the box uh eating slightly better um all of those and even probably actually taking a little bit of a, a break from from exercising as hard yeah has probably actually worked a lot of wonders mm-hmm. so i'm definitely in the more of the festive mood a yep. little more or a happy mood, yep. which is good. Uh, with related to the uh, getting out and the kind of mental health aspect of of the exercise, mm-hmm. uh, I went to Raymond Park for the first time in a in a while. Not a long time to do not a long time, but just a little while. Yep. And it was one of the it was one of the moments where I, it's kind of a reminder of why I actually like going there because because okay. of the people I meet there. Mm-hmm. And so I met um, two two friends um there uh and they were kind of like one after the other randomly it's like one okay. left and then the other one kind of like came, came around, around yeah, yeah. um and 
uh, I was chatting with one. I was like, hey, man, what's going on? Like, you know, what's been happening? He's like, yeah, yeah, you know, uh, just coming out here. He seemed to be mm-hmm. like an okay mood. I was like, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, you know, job wise, remember you were saying you were doing this, but you took this break because mm-hmm. you were doing this other stuff. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I've had to change the, um, have you heard of FTX? And I was like, no, man, no, don't tell me what you're going to say. And yeah, sure enough, he was doing a lot of trading on FTX and yeah. um, had a substantial amount in there. Mm. And as I was going over the episode, which one was it? Uh, 349. Of, of meanderings and I was creating some clips mm. and I was realizing like man I did especially after that interaction mm. with him I was like oh man I, I, I did come across a little bit callous I think when I was re-listening to that yeah it was kind of the you know just the it's it's a shame it's a shame that people got wrecked like he did mm. um, and you know for me it's in my mind it's it's kind of this real obvious not your keys not your crypto you mm. like you gotta get it off but for him, you know, he was talking about how he was trading and it was like he kind of needed to keep it on there and it, you know, all these kind of like logical decisions that do you led know, up to do that. Do you need it to be on there? I question Look, that. I question that. In, in, if you're trading, day trading, mm-hmm. which is what he was doing. You can do it on different platforms. It doesn't have to be on FTX. Well, that's I mean, the not, thing. Not, not, not even thing. like centralized platforms. Um, what, like DEXs and things yeah. like that? Uh, uh, futures and... Mm. Um, I'm I'm questionable of that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I I I haven't seen enough kind of functionality. Uh, look, maybe it's doable. Maybe he didn't mm. put in the work to see what is possible to to be done. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, but in any case, I was just like, yeah, man, I was I was a little bit callous there. I I feel like I should have showed a bit more sympathy to to people. I I get it. I get why it's it's just so. And look, I I kept my crypto when I bought in. 2017 mm. on an exchange for fucking three years man two and a mm. half years something like that i just got lucky that it was you know nothing happened in that yeah, time yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. so so when mm. i well, wanted to like stupidly sell it when corona happened and mm. um well not stupidly it was a good decision but it it, it would have been better for me if i just held Did it you just held it yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh and yeah, I was, I was just going like, yeah, all right. Um, but uh, related to the mental health, he it was kind of the impetus for him to actually start getting back out to, to calisthenics again because it was just like oh, had he not done just it? weighing on his mind. Yeah, like it, it sounded like he'd taken a pretty big uh, gotcha. break. So, um, yeah, if you if you got wrecked by FTX, do some calisthenics, man. So, yeah, that's, that's a thing. Uh, there, there's a saying that I heard from somebody that we were driving this particular individual out to a Christmas party last week yeah it was last week maybe later i can't remember but she said um i have empathy for this for this particular person person uh but not sympathy and i like that yeah i, I did like yeah that. there's I'm, I'm using empathy sympathy and compassion kind of interchangeably Interchange- yeah. yeah okay yeah. well they're not they're not I, I, they're I know, not i know i know but but i will be uh, i think in that in that in a lot of these cases especially ftx and a few of other places um like like i've got empathy for people especially like if you've lost money because of it yeah like there's there's a understanding of like that that would really suck it would really suck for me um but sympathy levels they can be varying i mean look if, if for some reason uh let's say for our good friend a good friend that we've got man shield that um if he if those particular exchanges that he's on and that goes just tits up um again i've got empathy for him you know you don't want that to happen to a friend you don't want that to happen to anybody uh there's got to be winners and losers in a lot of these markets but i don't really have sympathy you know i'm gonna make fun of him i'm gonna <laughs> wreck him i'm gonna tell him i told you so and I've got, there's no sympathy. There's no, there's no victim mentality there. I'm not going to be like appeasing him. You know, if he has to work extra hard, well, you're going to have to work extra hard because you lost all your money. So no, I th- no I th- sympathy in that. Regard. I think the difference between empathy and sympathy is empathy is you can understand it, what they're going through, and sympathy is you kind of feel it yourself as well. Mm, no, that was, that was I my understanding. So. I think empathy is when you you feel and understand someone. Sympathy is when you're sympathetic for what's happened. As in, like. I am sorry that this has happened to you. I'm not sorry if it happens to Mitchell. I understand look, it. Look it up, man, because I, I think that might be where we've gotten into word word talking, so we'll, we'll have a we'll have look. A, so. yeah. Uh, yeah, so the last one okay, was... So empathy. Okay. The ability to understand and share the feelings of another. So to understand and share the feelings of another. Um, and sympathy is feeling of pity and sorrow for someone else's misfortune. Okay. Sorry. In, in, still in that case, I don't feel pity or, or sorrow for someone. So like for Manchel losing his coins. No, I don't feel pity. That's, you knew what was going to happen. 
we've advised you of these things. It's going to tits up. If it happens to me, folks, if I had the coins in there, don't, don't feel, don't don't feel sympathy for me. Feel empathy, as in like share the feelings of, of loss. That's, that's painful. Obviously, there's going to be times in the, in the world that you do feel empathy and sympathy for people. You know, if someone loses a family member, someone loses an animal, someone loses whatever, you can be empathetic and you can feel sorry for them. That's mm. totally understandable. But there's aspects where you... you it's, it's almost not helpful to be sympathetic towards someone, but yeah, you can definitely okay. be empathetic. Yeah, I gotcha. There's another definition i read a book called against empathy by paul bloom once mm. once upon a time i don't think i did a review on it maybe i did uh, it's hard, hard to remember like, i've done, sound like I've done too many yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, essentially in that he was he was actually arguing against this notion of it's it's okay to understand it but sharing like actually feeling the feeling of someone who's mm. who's been wrecked is he, he comes up with some arguments against that it's yeah. a if if you're interested in in that um, aspect might be mm. worth looking at. Uh, the last one was you asked me a little while ago. Is like, Karen, you ever going to do running again? Yeah. Well, I have. I have indeed. Two days uh, ago, he's gone for a run. Two days ago, I went for a run. Yeah. I went to a place called Unfit Run Club here in in Brisbane. Oh, okay, yep. So it was a club. Which, the, the club thing set up. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So On a Thursday it, afternoon. I mean, uh, so Tuesday afternoon, Thursday afternoon, Saturday mornings at six thirty a.m. I'm not Perfect. going to that. Um, okay, so you went to the Thursday, Thursday afternoon. Went to the Thursday afternoon yep. one. Uh, I actually, <laughs> it was very funny. So I went to, you know, did the run itself. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I actually probably one of the first times ever I've ever done a run without tracking it. Anything, um, yep. So it was three Ks. I'm guessing I did it in like 18, 20 minutes, something like that. And, you know, afterwards we all went to the kind of brewery and, and, and had a beer there. And there was quite a few people, it was about 40 ish, 30, 40, wow. um, who went on this. Yeah. It was like a, a big stack of us running damn. along the, um, yeah. along the river and, uh, you know, I was chatting with some people in there. I was making some new friends and mm. things like that. And I was casually actually telling someone, they're like, oh, what do you do? I was like, yeah, I've got a podcast called Mere Mortals. I saw the guy next to me make like a movement like or something, yeah, but yeah, yeah. You know, I didn't, didn't really pay that much attention mm -hmm. to it. It was only afterwards that it got put into context. Uh, and so I was chatting with these people and then like he, um, when that stopped, he mm -hmm. randomly turned around. He's like, I've listened to you. I've, I've, I've seen you before. And he like pulled it up and yeah, sure enough, he had us on on spotify no way. which was uh was kind of cool uh, hmm. I, I believe he met he, now he says he met you at one of the language events that happened now i believe you only went to one of them yeah. from what i can remember i, 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 I only I remember the one more. that we went to yeah wow so he he um was trying to learn a bit of french there or something so yeah if, uh, his name was aaron if that if that helps as well oh, honestly I'm, I'm better with faces than i am with yeah. names so yeah. maybe if i saw his face maybe i might recollect that but not by name yeah way. yeah uh, anyway it was wow. a, it was a just cool little moment there and it it did actually give me a reminder of uh there there are people and he tuned into one episode and it was about nfts actually so you okay. must you must have been talking with him about nfts so this was uh and it was in particular it was the the one that we didn't like February of 2021. Oh, so yeah, okay. the one where I was kind of like sharing the one about ago. Gary V's NFT and stuff like that, or just broadly no, I think talking I about think it. you were just broadly you brought it up. Good gosh, right, okay. at, right before we'd even, mm -hmm. you know, it was like five months later or four months later that we wow. actually, you actually were the first one to buy anything, yeah. and uh, it did give me the reminder though of oh, okay, there are people who tune in every once in a while, and yeah. so I look at the stats and I I know roughly how many people tune in and mm -hmm. whatnot, but it is a reminder okay yeah there are for every kind of dedicated peter listener mm. there are probably quite a few who just tune in for like a random one here and there yep and so i'm, I'm gonna try and start doing a little bit of a better job with the the value for and in particular my wordage of booster grams um because mm -hmm. man they're a complex thing <laughs> they're yeah. not they're not easy and so I, I say all sorts of things like upload your Bitcoin onto onto Fountain. Mm -hmm. I, I probably need to use much better words than that. Yeah, so, more um, simplistic. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's uh, just something something uh, from almost for myself and as a reminder mm -hmm. for you to to tell me if I'm if I say maybe when we're explaining V for V, one of the other person should take a kind of like bright eyes, never heard never of this heard before. of it before, seeing it actually like what fits. Yeah, what what wait what does that mean a, mm. a, a, a sat a boostergram or you know that, that sort of thing it, yep. it, it, i think it could be helpful yep, yep for okay. sure oh, good point so my main topic was actually something you brought up on the musings which is ai is trending again so we got to jump mm. on the bandwagon one um so i'm actually still rather 
unimpressed with with all of them mm -hmm. so uh there was before this one there was the dali 2 um i remember i was talking about another thing before that and it doesn't actually feel like too much of a step change for me from from the search engines i normally use mm -hmm. which is google and youtube and to a certain extent uh photo editors which i sometimes use for our thumbnails mm. to make you know oil painting chiron marble chiron uh, yeah. whatever chiron it doesn't actually feel like too much of a step change from those i, mm. I can kind of see the okay yeah it's it's impressive but it's, mm. it's not that different what has impressed me though is actually how much i'm starting to see it in kind of varied other places and it's it's mm. almost like the regularity that it's popping up where it's and here's the next trend mm. everyone go and do check this one out and here's the next one yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know the diff the distance between us talking about Dali 2 and this one, the what was it? OpenAI's GPT Chat, or Chat something? GPT3. Yeah. GPT3. Yeah. yeah. That that was pretty small, man. That's mm. only been what a couple of months, Maybe. you reckon? Uh, not it's not too much at all. Uh and so <laughs> there was one. Well, there's, and there's another AI trending thing at the moment right now in terms yeah. of Lumi, I believe it is. Okay. Lumi or Luma. I don't even know that one. Uh, where people like upload your face and a little bit of your shape and it will create you in all okay. these different yes, ways. I have seen that. That's been like all and over that's the place. A, that's like a different brand yep. of AI. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Because uh, I have seen that one yeah. as well. So yeah, it's really, uh, it is breaching, you know, the public consciousness on mm -hmm. many levels. I saw a couple of those on Instagram. So, yep. you know, it's, it's um, interacting different pe with people as different people. It's not just like crypto people or people who really love drones mm. and new technology or yeah etc so uh <laughs> there was one on this uh one of the husky discord husky side just called mm. um straw uh, sayo strawberry farm and they had this thing called mr incredible and i'll put a couple of like photos on your screen and whatnot it was actually rather surprised it could use gifs and use them kind of in a good con in a in a context that made sense mm. And it wouldn't even be like you'd prompt it to use a GIF. It would just respond to a, with a GIF and certain promptings to okay. it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was called Mr. Incredible because it had like Mr. Incredible's face, but it was um, it was just like a random bot. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, understood jokes like Dev Hour. Do you know that one? It's like yeah. when's the next Dev Hour? And you're like, what's Dev Hour? And it's like, Devour these nuts. <laughs> <laughs> and it knew how to respond to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know how it actually could get that without being you know integrated into like the Hosky discord or, or or maybe maybe that's outside of that mm. probably uh it was actually really positive and inspiring it was it would okay. it would be like what what are your goals mr incredible and he'd be like my goals are to you know improve myself to the best ability i can mm. to be thankful and grateful for it was actually like like quite yeah, I, I went, yeah, I okay you know way. what having a, a little bot like this just kind of reminding you every now yeah, yeah, and yeah. then if, if maybe it's on your twitter account maybe it's on uh, i don't know even like a your alexa voice thing or something in the morning it's just mm. like yeah i'm gonna get after it today what are you doing kyron something yeah. like that I can mm. I could kind of see that improve in my mood a bit. <laughs> I, I could I could. I mean, it's interesting because a lot of that that particular technology we're talking about it's many years old, like many 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 years old. Yeah, well, um, yeah, tons of this stuff. I think it's more there. so just the applications are starting to become more evident. Like people are using it more and more for the same reasons. Here's here's an interesting um, parallel I think from technology. So AI precedes cryptocurrencies, a cryptocurrency, Bitcoin and the rest by a long a long time i think it's like in the 70s that ai or even before then right that ai's were sort of around and ai's yeah, people were trying to do cryptocurrencies back then as well i guess i guess in the i'm talking bitcoin onwards there of course yeah there was what the the hash calculations and cryptography in itself i mean you could t you could say that cryptography itself was you know the initial you know start of all of these things and then goes from there sure you could but let's just talk about from bitcoin of what it bitcoin is from 2009 onwards let's just say that's the the beginning of the revolution of almost something like being apparent for use and being used more broadly than it was before. Maybe before it was, sure, it was around, but not implemented as well, not uptaken, didn't reach a particular like threshold where it's like, oh, now it's a thing. AI was that many years before that, right? And things like your robotic process automation in um, you know companies, that's been around for ages, like ages and ages. In fact, when I was helping like the ANZ lead in 2015, 2016 around that, Shit has been around for a long time. You just 
you almost just applying with things that, that existed for a long time before. Um, but it's only, well, at least from what it seems to me, it's only been maybe 10 years, five years, let's just do like a, a decade sort of grouping where it's moved to, it is easy to use. So I've, I've created a chatbot in a similar way where you're talking about basic Like I coded, created it, was able to operate it, integrate it into a website, 2016, 2017, right? I created that. I'm not even technical, but I knew how to do that. <clears throat> there wasn't an abundant amount of people that knew how to do that then. It was like, oh, that's, that's kind of like a, a cool thing. You would pay someone to go and do a, you know, a, an integrated AI onto your Facebook Messenger or to your Instagram. So it would do auto replies and auto conversations or create these sort of bots. Um, but people knew how to do it. You kind of had to be wanting to do it. There had to be kind of a reason. Whereas now we, we're almost in this threshold where it's easy. It was just really easy, you know, with open AI's APIs to do chat GP3 and a few other things. You, you can source a lot of these things that you previously were doing either manually or you had to do in-house, you know, um, algorithms and the like. You're just sending them off to be done, you know, by, by different people. Um, we, we, <clears throat> we were operating, I think it's oh, genomic, no, something like, uh, I forget the name. But I remember when I was, we were doing um, Bridge Masters that, there was aspects of AI that we were utilizing then. And again, it was like, it was just enough of the boundary that I was like, this is a little bit too complex for me to really want to play around with, but it sounds cool. You need really powerful computers. It sounds really fun, but I'm not going to go deep into it because it's just not as accessible. But now it does feel like accessible. So open AIs, um, you know, AI and different functions that they have, man, way more powerful than anything that existed back then, but it is accessible. Like it's literally just, hey, go into here, sign up, you can go do it. Sure, they're going to make money off the back end of it, but you're accessing all of these much better algorithms and AIs that they've set up. Wonderful. Okay, that's 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 really good. And I go, okay, that's awesome. I, I can imagine it becoming now more open, more easy to interact. So we were talking about you know Dali and a few other things. Um, I'm sure that in the years to come, you're going to probably have to have a younger generation that uptakes and, and is almost just growing up with. Oh, you can just do this. When you say, oh, it's not a step change. I don't think it's a step change. I don't think it's a step change either, but it's it's enough of a change that people who are growing up with it now will be, I was saying with the word obvious, it will be obvious to them, why would a company need to hire a graphic designer when I can just get this AI to do this for me? Why would we spend 20 minutes creating slides when this AI will do it and it'll do it based on like the best way that people are gonna click on a particular thumbnail? You know, it's, it's probably gonna go towards that way, um, but it gives me hope in the sense that I go, well, Here's a technology that's been around in the, I guess, in popularity for quite a few, like say 20 years now, and really now starting to become easy to use. And I go, okay, you know, you know what's hard to use currently? Still, Bitcoin, all your other cryptocurrencies, you know, NFTs, it's hard to use. Hard to use in the same, in the way that I, I think it's easy to use. But that's not, the, that's not the common understanding. And I think 20 years ago, people would have said like, ah, oh, operating AI right now with algorithms and runs and APIs, it's easy but not to like the people who weren't around in that area. And it kind of makes me think, looking forward, I go, oh, I hope that in like 20 years, it, it feels as easy as this, you know, you, that you can go down the path of creating tokens or being decentralized in the way that you're handling your finances to the point that it's just very easy for people to, to uptake. Have you been wowed by any AI? I, I was really wowed about the chat, the GPT-3. I was following that since the previous inception of OpenAI's one. Uh, I liked its, its conglomeration of things. Um, never never so truly to be like wow this is ridiculously insane in saying that i've never really seen you know deep may, maybe really impressive stuff either in the past maybe that's not the case although i was very impressed many years ago when i saw it being used in a lot of pl places for visual uh, verification so you know a, a post office uh, a few other places where you know you'll still get thousands and hundreds of thousands of things coming through the um in paper form and you know they've got these machines which will do basically scan uplift all of the text translate it into their own forms then generate things out of that it'll just do it all on, on its own processing i thought ah, that's that's pretty cool i, I do think that, that was cool then um i mean i do think the stuff happening right now is cool but i agree with you it's not like wow this is like huge changes this is ridiculous what, ai type what, of level. what do you think it would take for you to to do that what's something that i think it'll be for me if, if it was wow that if i talk to say if I, the problem i had with yui called up somebody and i was talking to somebody and they're helping me out or and i found out that was pure ai yeah i'd go wow that's impressive that yeah. that to me i'd go damn that is i mean it might not be 
specifically, you know, complete, like I'd expect that AI is human, but if it was pretty close enough that it was understanding and conceptualizing and putting actions in, I'd be like, okay, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, you know? that's the same thing I, I said. Um, we, we actually talked about this recently where we, you thought there was nothing that there that there's no one who you've been interacting with online we're particularly talking about online mm. where you thought oh there's no way any of them could be an ai the, the, like mm. that was that was your under, that was your that w- what you said uh and yet it was like well what if there is you know would yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that would that, kind that, of blow that your socks pres- that would, yeah that yeah. would blow my socks yeah, yeah and and same thing for me which is for me it, i guess you know that's essentially them passing the turing test i know the turing test is mm. a, a bit more you know, you've got to have one person on this side, the, the AI on the other, and you've got to be able to determine just based on text through like that. Mm-hmm. But I, I think if, it, you know, yeah, if you do a phone call and you, you speak with a human and it's like, oh, by the way, that, was, that wasn't a human. Well, or it doesn't, you find doesn't out even have to be later. that. It could be like a robotic sounding thing. It could be like quite basic. But if I was able to, if I was able to call up, let's keep it simple. If I was able to call up, say, Domino's, which might not be far off, if you were to call Domino's, because you can do it by text, but maybe a bit more complex. Let's say I called because of a car insurance claim or something. And I was like, hey, I've gotten into a car accident. I'm in this place. I'm in this happened. I just want to do it. And I was like, okay, processed. Uh, this is your next steps. We've sent this through to this. This is what you have to do next steps. We'll send you a text message to confirm. Cool. Uh, cool. Confirmed. Awesome. I've confirmed. I need to organize car hire. Yep. Okay. We can, uh, it'll be like, ooh, ooh, ooh. car hire organized for X date for this person for whatever. Thank you. Like it doesn't have to be, you know, conversational, which is maybe not not all the way to like chewing tests. You know, you can't even tell the difference. Like you could tell, but if it's allowing me to take the action to make the like a human on the other end obsolete, I'd be like, wow, that's impressive. That's yeah, really impressive. Uh, I'm not so I'm not sure about that. Yep. that that's already existing, man. It's all, all those ones where it's like press one for blah blah blah, plus two for blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I'm uh, just saying that. Yeah, so the, the difference here is it's a conversational. That. The conversational, the uh, the addition of things that might not generally be as part of the um, the proven path. So again, the difference here is that AI, as opposed to just a robotic process automation, you know, robotic process automation or a normal automation, it's just a process. Now, if you break the process or it hasn't been already codified, then you're fucked in that other end. So okay, I'm not. If it's just a process, again, a chatbot, it's just a process, right? I'm I'm putting it in there intense so that if you say hey mr incredible how are you feeling i could put in that roughly if someone asks roughly this question that here's 17 different ways you can answer it cool and then it learned from that awesome that's not ai to the extent that's basic level ai to its most basic level right at the very beginnings um but if it was like all the way to like okay you can start like it kind of knows like oh, okay cool at this point roughly you might want like a, um you know uh, a rental car or whatever cool uh, i can prompt that i can organize that for you i can get that sorted out with another machine or a connection Okay, that's that's starting to impress me. Yeah, that's, to be like, that's, wow. that's just complexity to me. If it was like they could understand a, a a a funny license plate or something, like they're dealing with you know car insurance claim, hmm. they see my license plate and um, it's it's uh, one of my dad has hmm. has a funny one. I won't say it just for <laughs> privacy reasons, but hmm. if it could read that and it's it's kind of like you know one out of every six people kind of get the joke. If it could read that and be like, "Wait, what the fuck?" or say, or like, you know, laugh at at and a kind of obscure joke. Gotcha. Okay, uh, that's what I, it would take. The AI. I think, I think it would need to be a human thing. The the complexity. I, I, I'm not. I'm not that impressed by. Mm. Maybe it's because I I very very specifically know what goes a lot in in some of it of it in the back end. If I saw such complexity be handled so gracefully, I'd be like, "Wow, I'm impressed." Cause I've seen very complex organizations use ai i've seen all the different steps that you can have ai from rpa through to chatbots through to you know complete um neural network style setup that like sentient operation of the ai driving in that if you like if right of those upper realms and doing it easily in like a lot of things i'd be like hmm. damn that's cool that's cool. yeah I, f- I feel human human uh connection is a bit more complex than being able to Oh, I mean, for sure. Things, I mean, I, so. I still would be impressed if that happened. Yeah. I'm just saying, I think my thresholds might be lower. I'd be like, yeah, gotcha. oh, if, if it was like picking up the humor, I'd be like, wow, that's that's impressive. Like, it's like really, really yeah, cool. Yeah. It gets, gets um, a girl's number. Yeah. But I'd be like, damn. But if it, if it was doing other things, I'd also be impressed. 
yeah yeah for sure Fine. cool yeah all right i think that's um that's all i got for today Good. all right layers layers is new for, for people well, who might not have listened to us I was, uh, <laughs> I was well i'll later how, how do you want to go basic for people for valley for valley how, how, uh, how do you want to introduce to people like, so, a more so simpler concept the value we follow a value for value model so we do not take advertising <clears throat> we do not put up paywalls for any of this content mm -hmm. uh we do not have any business related behind the mere models we're not selling you merch or anything like that we do the value for value model so essentially that is we put this up we do the value up front put it up for free you can tune in as much or as little as you want and if you enjoy it i just ask that you listen to your your conscience and mm -hmm. i suppose maybe your understanding of the world which is you know good things require good things in return kind of a karmic notion if you're if you're into buddhism or if you're perhaps a christian you'd see it as a you know kind of paying the tithe or you know giving to the poor that sort of thing mm -hmm. we're very poor over here because we're because <laughs> yep. we invest, invest in crypto <laughs> exactly uh and so yes with the value for value model we just ask that you return value in some shape or form so it could be doing something like sharing it with a friend uh it could be tuning into a, another episode mm -hmm. you know small things if you want to give a review on apple Podcasts, more than welcome to do mm -hmm. that if you want to click the like button on whenever things whatever you're listening to if there's a like button do that if you feel like following one or, or myself on instagram or twitter or discord joining the discord that is awesome mm -hmm. as well and then the final way or uh, you know leaving a comment mm -hmm. something like that of of your specialized ai technique and how Kyron's so much more correct in that the complexity yeah. in human <laughs> is, is better. I would love to have that personally. And then the final one was a sending in a monetary payment. So we mm -hmm. don't particularly enjoy using the fiat system. The So this is things like Patreon or PayPal, things like that. And so we use something called Boostergrams. Now, Boostergram is when you are in the actual podcasting app itself and then you send in a message. And this message has to have a portion of Bitcoin attached to it, mm -hmm. in particular Bitcoin on the Lightning Network. So mm -hmm. there is Bitcoin, the, the kind of top level, the layer one, which is the you know block times of 10 minutes and things like that. Bitcoin on the Lightning Network is more peer-to-peer, -peer, super fast, rapid payments, and so. Well, block to, one, level one is still peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, so, yes, correct. This is super fast in this case, um, and uh, to do that, probably the easiest way is to go to one of the new podcast apps dot com, which mm -hmm. can allow you to do this. So examples here are Fountain, Breeze, uh, CurioCaster, Podverse, mm -hmm. Castomatic, and in a bunch of them they will have a wallet s section mm -hmm. if you go to the wallet there'll be a couple of choices i know i'm pretty sure some of them have an a payment integrated into it so mm -hmm. you can like essentially deposit money deposit there money some, uh yep. breeze for example mm -hmm. does this i know that for sure some of the others it might prompt you hey here's a qr code and you'll have to you know get uh, your Bitcoin from wherever that you have it, mm -hmm. whether this be on an exchange, hopefully not on an exchange, people. Hopefully you've learned that from us and that you need to get it on your own wallet, on your yeah. own. Hey, look, I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't have against it. Use exchanges to acquire it if you would like to. Oh yeah, and well, then move. Yeah. It. You can acquire it. You can acquire it without exchanges. You absolutely can. Just it's, again, it's I, much I, harder. I, yeah, yeah, much yeah. harder doing that. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, at this point, I'm not suggesting if you're quite new to the world of it, do not be trying to go and go on some decentralized D exchange D or something. Yeah, no, 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 no. That's, uh, Just a centralized exchange is fine. It's difficult. It's difficult. And yeah, so in some of these, uh, I can recommend Blue Wallet, for example. Mm -hmm. I've, I've found that useful to, if you get Bitcoin off of the exchange, converting some of that to the, the Lightning um, Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. I've, I've found that doable and reasonably easy. Reasonably. Still, still, still not. Super, super, super easy, easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and then um sending that through to us in with the uh, with the message or you can stream to us and set a streaming amount of mm -hmm. 5 10 15 whatever bitcoin high, yep. 100 <laughs> 100 satoshis per minute and yep. so a satoshi is a portion of bitcoin that's 100 million satoshis equals one bitcoin mm -hmm. so if you're streaming in uh let's just say 10 satoshis a minute over the course of an episode of 60 minutes that's 600 that's 600 that's probably equivalent to 25 20 cents 15 cents mm -hmm. at the moment no it's not breaking the bank if you want to do more than that 
feel we, free to do we so. Really appreciate that. So absolutely, yeah. That's that's the, I like that. I like a bit the, more the condensed, simpler. bit more uh, mm-hmm. examples of how to do it. Um, and maybe look, maybe we don't have to do it every time because that if we do that every time, it, it can get a bit long. But yeah, um, uh, yeah, we'll definitely definitely sprinkle them in at least mm-hmm. to to be able to give a, a more detailed step by step process. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. All right, folks, Boys. just going to leave it there. Me and more lads, thank you so much for joining us wherever you are in the world. I hope you enjoyed. One out. Karen out. Peace. Good. Good.